Hey folks, Prepper Princess, can you see me? Can you hear me? I gotta get some light going on in here. Okay, so I am loud and clear. I think that light's a little too bright. <laughs> Okay, so I guess we are getting on with our live stream. Today is going to be about some extreme frugal living, extreme stuff that we can do in the house. And Rocky is right here saying hello to everybody. All right. Not really sure where to start. This is going to be a little bit more interactive, so I'm going to be reading the comments as we go. Um, Todd is the master moderator, and he will not take anyone saying anything rude. You'll immediately be kicked out. So... Keep it, keep it clean, folks. Be nice. Be nice. I'm a real person. Thank you, Sunset. Hi. Um, okay, so Terry lives on $783 a month, super, super low income. Now, Terry, if you're able to get by on that without um, any government assistance, without any low income um, subsidized housing, uh, food stamps, uh, food pantries. If you're able to get away with that, then you are better than I am. I can tell you that right now. So, so I first do want to go over housing. I recently just put up a video on my Patreon channel. Um, sometimes I go over to Patreon and I make videos based off of questions on my YouTube channel that I think is going to be more interesting content. So, um, I went over there and I made a video about how I look at houses what it is that I'm looking for and how to fix them up and decorate them uh, to improve the resale value of them. Now, as you know, a lot of people are moving from California to Arizona because of taxes. Essentially, the taxes are making it so that people are sort of getting kicked out. They can't afford it anymore. So they're all coming over here. First, they were coming to Phoenix, Arizona, which got Californicated. And um, the rules and laws got a bit too much. So then people started moving to Lake Havasu City, Arizona, uh, which is on a lake. It's beautiful, very great retirement community, low taxes, and a bit of a college party town uh, during spring break and stuff like that. Then it's starting to get Californicated over there, and people are starting to come to where I live now. In the last, I've only been here since March. But in the last eight or nine months, 10 months, whatever it is I've been here, I can't count, um, the housing prices have sort of skyrocketed. So I bought mine right at the right time from the right person. I don't think they have an exit tax, but taxes aren't do it being done till April. At the right time from the right person for the right reasons. And this was a bit of a fixer upper. It was technically move and ready, but it needed a lot of updating. Um, including light fixtures and the kitchen, the bathrooms, there was some plumbing problems and it's doubled in value. So I bought it for 67 and it's going to show on Zillow for like 75. But even in the neighborhood that I live in, I could sell it tomorrow and list it for 135 and probably get 125 to 130 for it. So it's doubled in price in the last few months. And <clears throat> as if people know my history, they know that I moved here with the plan of living here for two to three years and doing what's called a, called a slow fix. And I would either rent out this property or sell it for a profit. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't really care at this point. Uh, but I do have plans to move and um, do slow fixer uppers. So I'll never be homeless. Um, and I'll actually be making money instead of spending money on rent. I'm looking in or what I do, my theory or my whatever it is that I'm doing. I'm looking for a place that has uh, wa uh, usually water. It has to have a Walmart or a Target within 20 miles to 30 miles. It has to have a hospital within 20 to 30 miles. And it has to be a fixer upper. Um, right now, oh, and the minimum wage of where I look has to be $12 because that's where the majority of people are going to be moving to. 
not a lot of people want to move to a place that has a minimum wage of $7.25 an hour when they can pay the same price for a house in a location where you can get $12 an hour. So um, California, Oregon, Washington, Arizona, I believe Maine is another one. And there's other ones like Connecticut and New Jersey, but the taxes there are so high. Uh, I don't even put those on on what, and I understand the good luck getting rent, you know, this whole moratorium thing has made me re, you know, you got to roll with the punches. So it's more than likely going to be a slow fix and sell. Um, so yeah. Um, all right. So let's get into that's, that's the housing aspect. That's how I do it. When I became debt free at 24, I promised myself I would never pay rent again unless it was like absolutely necessary. I would even rent a van or not rent. I would actually buy a van before I would be willing to rent an apartment and just put my stuff in storage. That's just the way I am. I made a promise to myself and I don't ever want to live uh, where I have to pay rent again. So that's that's pretty much it. all it is for housing is look for the absolute cheapest stuff. If you are on such a low income that you can only rent a room, then that's all that you can do. Um, some people are giving up the rented life for RV life. And Arizona is a great state in the fact that if you have an RV, as long as you're parked, uh, I believe it's 200 feet off of a street or whatever, you can you can park and stay there for a very, very long time. Yeah, you can't kick out renters right now, which is another thing as to why I don't think I want to become a property manager. I was actually in I was in escrow for a rental and then I backed out at the very last minute. I did lose my $500 deposit because I had gone in there before the moratorium took effect and then the and then the government says you can't kick anybody out and I was like, "Peace out. I I'm not doing this right now." So, <clears throat> So let's go ahead and go over the main stuff. So let's start with electricity um, and gas. So as you guys know, I have a gas heater and a gas stove that I have not even turned on. I use my solar oven and a toaster oven as my ovens. Uh, I use a microwave and I use a camp stove, which is $5 propane bottles that last me about two months per bottle. So it's cheaper for me to do that than it would be to put in the $400 deposit that they hold on to for a year in order to turn the gas on, which is ridiculous. And plus still haven't found anybody to install the microwave that has the range uh, vent fan that would be needed to cook anyway. So I'm just holding off on it. Maybe eventually I'll get gas. Maybe I won't. I'm fine either way. So when it comes to electricity, the two biggest energy user users in your house are going to be your refrigerator and your water heater, whether it's gas or electricity. Water heater, refrigerator. So when you buy a refrigerator, I would say get something small. Mine is an 11 cubic foot, and I actually wanna go smaller because there's still plenty of space on the inside. But this place will hold a 14 cubic foot refrigerator, which is a standard smallest size available for a house. Uh, they usually use them for apartments, but for a house. Now, there, there are switches inside of your refrigerator where it's usually like one to five. Put it on three. In the winter time, if you live in a really cold climate, put it on two. It's going to save you electricity uh, over the long haul and it's going to keep your refrigerator lasting longer. Also, if you have an electric water heater, there's two things you can do. Actually, three. So the first one is to turn down your water heater. I don't have the option of doing that here because it's in a weird encasement that I can't get into and I can't even describe it, but it's you can't get to it. Uh, if I want, if I ever need to replace the water heater, it's going to be a huge, a huge thing. Um, yeah, your refrigerator's in three freezers. Jeez, do you have a family of twenty? Um, I fill up my freezer and it lasts me like three months just for my freezer part. But yeah, the water heater. So turn it down, not quite to the vacation part, but turn it down and you're still going to have over like 120 degree water. The second one is you can put a timer on it and time it to turn on a half an hour to an hour before you're about to take your bath or shower. That doesn't generally work with larger families, but it will work for one or two people. The third thing, and this is what I do because I can't access my water heater, is I turn it off at the breaker. 
Um, and I just switch it on about a half an hour before I'm ready to take my bath or shower, uh, whether that be every day or every other day, that's or every third day, that's my choice. So uh, that really does significantly save on electricity. The I also use my solar stuff. This is a hydroponics garden, which is growing a bunch of stuff right now. The another thing that will greatly save is in the, it sounds ridiculous, but it really is true. A low flow shower head is not only going to save you on water. It's also going to save you on the heating costs of heating your water because a low flow has a pretty high aeration device that's already set in there. So it takes a long stream of water and it sort of stops it and spritz it outward. And you can get them for as like, they cost about anywhere between 15 and I guess you could go up to like two or $300, but the average is about 40 bucks. And it's going to increase the water pressure, but it's going to use only like 1.2 gallons per minute. So it will reduce your water consumption, but it'll also reduce the electricity or gas that is used to heat your water. So if you're using less water, your water heater is not going to kick in as much. And if you turn it on just a half an hour before you're about to take a shower, that's all even, that's even better. Uh, eco bulbs, the LED bulbs. So there's a lot of people who want to argue against LED and CFL bulbs, argue all you'd like. So CFL bulbs are better than incandescent and LEDs, which stands for light emitting diode, is better than CFL, which stands for compact fluorescent light. So they're going to provide as many lumens as a regular incandescent bulb. However, an eco bulb or an LED bulb can use as little as four watts. Uh, this bulb in this lamp right now, right here, is seven watts. So in that, if I were to turn off all the lights, I'd still be able to walk around no problem. And when you get new light fixtures, uh, like the ceiling fan here that has the light on, they're already going to have the LED lights in them. And they're not really something that you can swap out, but they do last, I believe it's up to like 15 years. So when you're installing a ceiling fan, you know, be prepared to install an entirely new ceiling fan in about 15 years. <clears throat> Those are your biggest savers on electricity. You can also, anywhere where you've got your TV, DVD, Roku player, your VCR, if you're old school, uh, put them on a power strip. And then every time you go to bed at night, flip off the power strip, and it's going to stop all of the electronics in that power strip from providing phantom power, which is essentially power that is being sucked out of the plug, but is not being used. So that's really important. When you have a cell phone charger, whether your cell phone is plugged into your cell phone charger or not, as long as that charger is plugged into the wall, it's using the full amount of wattage, which is usually around 50 watts, uh, give or take, depends on the phone that you have, but uses about 50 watts. So if you've already charged your cell phone, you unplug the cell phone from the charger, but the charger is still plugged into the wall, you're still using 50 watts of electricity that you're not using. You're not, it's not getting any anything done. All right, so that is pretty much all that there is to electricity. Um, Rocky is asleep. You need a Rocky cameo, huh? Well, there he is. But he's sleeping. But there's your Rocky cameo. Yeah, see, Rich, LED bulbs are getting better in technology more and more. And mine, I still have from my old house in California. And I not one has gone out yet. That's great, Juliana. I think LEDs are worth it, absolutely. They Back when I was in California, my mother would always complain that the electric bill was so high. It was always four or $500. And she would complain about that as we were children, when we were little, um, you know, we would do that breathing in the winter where you go like, <sighs> and like the smoke would come out of your mouth because it was so cold. <sighs> you know, you could blow little rings. And then we would be under our blankets, just like freezing, shivering, not wanting to get out of bed just because we knew it was so darn cold. The thing is, is that there was no insulation in the house. There was just like originally during the 1950s, somebody blew in a little bit of insulation in the attic and that was it. There was nothing in the walls. 
the first thing I did when I moved into that house was I paid $1,400 and this company came out and they drilled holes on the outside of the house. I had a polka dotted house for a year. So they drilled holes and they put, they put in blown in insulation above and below the fire line of every single um, part of the house everywhere. There was holes all over my house. Well, and then they seal up the holes, but there were polka dots all over my house. And then I personally um, went up into the attic and I went to Home Depot and got those big giant rolls and I unrolled them in the attic to the tune of $700. But PG&E offered a rebate. So I got a really big rebate on, I think I paid, I, I got like 35% off of the $1,400 that I spent. So it was, and then I got um, eco curtains, blackout curtains. I never had to turn on the heater or air conditioner in that house. It was so rare, like maybe four or five times a year, I would turn on the heater and maybe four or five times a year. I didn't have an air conditioner. I had a window AC unit. I would turn it on maybe four or five times a year. So think about that. You get down into the teens and twenties, even though it's the Bay area of California, you get down into the teens and twenties and teens and twenties at night and in the summertime, it can be up to 115 degrees for like a week and a week long period. And I hardly ever had to use anything because it was so well insulated. I never had that problem. So insulation is probably the best investment that you can make um, and stuff like that. And if you are going to upgrade your things, your refrigerator, your dishwasher, your television, you definitely want to go uh, energy efficient. This TV is a Vizio Walmart TV. I paid like 500 bucks for it way back in the day when it was energy efficient and it was like a really good price. Now it's like a pathetic price, but that's how technology works. This one is an amazingly good TV. The one I have in the guest room, which is the same size, is about half as thick as the TV and it uses about half as much as electricity. And I only bought them about three years apart. So if you're going to be buying a new TV or a new whatever, if you're going to get energy efficient, because it's a huge, huge difference. Same with my refrigerator, it's energy efficient. So it uses, I believe, a maximum of 300 watts, like, like peak time, like that's as much as it'll use. Yeah, Princess Peach LED bulbs, they do help a lot with your electric bill. All right, and then so food seems to be the place that people go. Now, I have my own views on food. And I think it's so strange. The older I get, the more I notice. But I'm not a foodie, right? Um, I'm not. I'm just, food does not matter to me. I don't care what I'm eating. As long as it tastes good and it's edible, I'll eat it. And, you know, it, it seems like these day and, this day and age, I, I have a theory that everybody in the world has an addiction, whether that be... Uh, alcohol, drugs, gambling, sex, um, oh, being a workaholic, um, uh, addiction to money saving. That's one of my problems. An addiction to shopaholic people spending money. There's hoarders out there. Hoarding is an addiction and a mental, a mental disorder. And all of, I have a theory that everyone has some sort of, some sort of an, an addiction. It seems like because drugs are illegal and alcohol is looked down upon and gambling is looked down upon, people will go to food as their addiction. That's why we have an obesity problem in the United States, not to mention that corporations are addicted to money and they provide food at no nutritional value, but you get a lot of calories. But uh, people go crazy over researching food. They're just like non-GMO, uh, range-free uh, gosh, uh, I can't, uh, heirloom, um, like anything they can think of. And then they will broadcast their beliefs on you as if yelling at you for giving out poor information on food is going to somehow change my mind. Now I'm going to be honest with you. I do believe there is a problem with GMOs only because autism has doubled like every five years for the last 70 years. Um, autism wasn't a thing when I was a kid and I think it's going to get worse and worse, but there's not anything that I can do about that. So let's talk about saving money on food. Uh, people have a tendency to think, well, um, I need to serve dinner. So it needs to be, 
a three course meal with appetizers and dessert and everything else. My hair is doing why I don't know why it's sticking up like that. Anyway, um, so people go crazy over food. I'm not a food person. Uh, I don't care. So let's talk about um, the fact that you don't have to serve you and your family a five course meal for dinner. You can keep it simple. You can do grilled cheese sandwiches and stew, and that can be your dinner. And you can make your stew with leftovers. For lunches, uh, I mean, a simple chicken sandwich, and I'm not talking about deli meat because deli meat is expensive. Just use leftover meat from the dinner the night before, make your kids a sandwich, and that's about it. Um, and plus a piece of fruit and potato chips. That was our thing growing up. We had a sandwich, a potato chip, and a fruit. So sandwiches are super easy. You can do peanut butter and jelly. You can do tuna, um, add onion, add celery to the tuna, makes it delicious. <clears throat> yeah, that's true too, Tom Leach. Um, ba boobs can cook vegan, really? Um, yeah, my hydroponic system, everything's growing really well, but it's not ready to harvest yet. So I don't know. I'm assuming it's going to be really good. So yeah, grilled cheese and tomato soup. Um, the cheapest things that you can get are like potatoes, carrots, onions, um, apples and oranges. Those are getting expensive. But if you have a neighbor who grows those, I used to have all of them. I used to grow all of them. And you can do so much with just a potato. <laughs> like seriously, there was this lady that I used to work with and every day for breakfast, she would have a hard boiled egg and she'd sprinkle salt on the hard boiled egg. And that was her breakfast. Her lunch was always a purple potato. She was from, I want to say the Philippines, but, or Vietnam, but I guess there having a purple potato for lunch is like us having a sandwich chip and apples. Like it's just homey, like, you know, it, it's wholesome. It's wholesome to them. So she would have her purple potato that she baked the night before and she'd bring it in foil and then she'd take the foil off and put it in the microwave and heat it up and just put salt and pepper on it. And she'd be eating her purple potato for lunch. They're packed with calories and vitamins and they're good for you. They are good for you. Um, Irish people have been living on them for so long for breakfast. You know, you don't have to make, first of all, cereal should be outlawed. Cereal is just bad for everybody. But oatmeal, breakfast, sprinkle a little cinnamon and sugar on top, maybe butter. I don't know how you like it. That's breakfast. It's very simple. And I'm not talking about the pre-made packets. I'm talking about Quaker oats in a giant tin. That's what I, what I use and that's what I like. There is also two eggs and toast. You go out, eggs right now, you know, where I live, you can get eggs for a dollar, a dozen, which, no, a dollar for 18. You can get them for a dollar for a dozen and a half eggs, which to me is insane. Now, personally, I spend more for free range eggs because I used to own chickens and they, I want them to be happy chickens. So I want them to be free range. I want them to be able to run around and have fun and be chickens. So I buy the free range, which is usually around three bucks a dozen. And to me, I'm willing to spend the extra $2, but $3 for a dozen, that's still 25 cents an egg. That's still super cheap. Um, so you can do that. Uh, you can do two eggs with toast. Um, you can get, you can do bagel with cream cheese for breakfast every day. One of the cheapest things that you can do is make blueberry muffins with Jiffy Mix. Jiffy Mix is 28 cents and it makes a dozen muffins. You can also do it in a loaf and make it into seven pieces so that you have one piece for every day of the week. It's like having a blueberry muffin for breakfast every day. You can do that with banana nut muffins. Uh, Krusty's, has <clears throat> Krusty's has banana nut bread mix. You can make a loaf of banana nut bread, even though it says muffins, and slice it into seven pieces. You've got it for a full week. Um, so, you know, food does not have to, and takeout is horrible. I, I can't, I don't eat takeout. I don't. You know, I should probably make a YouTube video because I think the last time I ate from a fast food restaurant was probably a year to a year and a half ago. I do not eat fast food. It tastes to me. It doesn't even taste like real food. Um, so I don't eat. I don't eat fast food. I don't even think I could choke down anything from Taco Bell if somebody put it in front of me right now. But fast food is such a waste of money. 
such a waste and you're going to be hungry. Uh, once you eat your fast food, you thank you. Show one, one, one. Once you eat fast food for lunch, you're just going to be hungry in two hours anyway. So it, it, it doesn't make sense to spend 10 or $15 a day on, on fast food. It doesn't make sense. Make it from home. And when it comes to potato chips, buy a big bag, you know, those big bag of Lay's or whatever it is, whatever your favorite flavor is. And you can buy like three or four of them. So get the sour cream and onion, get the nacho cheese, get the ranch, um, get the cheddar and sour cream, whatever your favorites are, get all four of them. And then open up that big giant bag and get a, get Sam, put them in sandwich bags. You know, a sandwich bag is about a serving. So you open up that bag and you've got 10 servings, 10 bags, 10 sandwich size bags of potato chips. And that's a great way to bring them to lunch. And you can also reuse those bags because it's just potato chips. It's not meat or anything like that. So please simplify your meals, simplify your food, stick to the outside of the supermarket. That's where your fruit, vegetables, and meat are and dairy sometimes. Uh, I personally drink soy milk um, over milk. So that's just me. Um, but anyway, stick to the outside. Anything that is processed, people don't understand how much processed food they're eating. When you go into the pizza aisle, if you want pizza and you are craving pizza so bad that you're willing to spend 20, 25 bucks on a pizza, get your butt over to Safeway, buy an overpriced make at home pizza for seven bucks. And you just, you just, you didn't save 13, you know, you didn't save $20, you know, you still spent $7 on an overpriced pizza, but if you're going to spend money on a pizza, you might as well spend seven instead of 20 or 25. All right. And yeah, everything is processed in a box. You get those, what is it like pre-made Buffalo wings or pre-made stir fry, pre-made lasagna. It's all uber processed and it's all got like. I don't know. It, it just, it doesn't taste fresh to me. Yeah. And you can get red Baron pizza too. Um, those come in a box two two boxes for like $4. So they're two bucks a box and there's two pizzas in that box and they're pretty good pizzas. It's only, so it's a dollar a pizza instead of, you know, 20, $25 a pizza. They're individual pizzas. So yeah, loads of salt. Oh my gosh, the salt. The salt is crazy. 50 pounds of potato for $12.99 is a really good price. I usually pay five bucks for five pounds. And I always have potatoes in my house. Always. I want to find a place that sells purple potatoes because I used to grow them and they were delicious and I loved them. But nobody sells them. They only sell yellow potato, russet potato, and, and the red potato. I can't find a purple potato because purple potatoes are purple on the inside. And if you ever want to freak out your family, <laughs> make instead of for like Thanksgiving, instead of making like normal white mashed potatoes, get some purple potatoes and make mashed potatoes out of that. And then instead of like brown gravy, get some white gravy. It's just going to creep them. They're going to think it's an alien on their plate. It's awesome. We don't have any Asian markets here, unfortunately. So simplify your food, folks. Oh, thank you, Sean. Thank you, Sean. I appreciate it. Um, so yeah, food, simplify. Don't eat out. Stick to the outside aisles. Do not buy cereal. Figure out how to make your own cereal. I make my own cereal with Quaker oats, banana chips, and granola. As so much healthier, keeps you fuller so much longer, and it just tastes better. It does. Yeah, Okinawa, Japan. I don't think she was from Japan. She was, I think she was Asian, but I don't know if it was Japan. <clears throat> yeah, so you can add fresh vegetables and make your own pizza. Hi, Cheryl. Um, I don't, you know, somebody said something about baking the Quaker oats. I just eat them uh, cold. I don't, I don't really care if they're cold or warm. So it's faster to eat it cold. Um, but I've heard about baking Quaker oats, but it just um, never really appealed to me. Uh, the granola I get at Winco, it comes in a giant bin. So it, it's actually cheaper than making my own uh, if I buy it from the bulk bin at Winco. So I do want to talk about cars really quick here. 
Okay, so let's start with some weird stuff. Not really weird stuff, but stuff. All right, so in my last video, I showed like living in poverty or below the poverty line, whatever. And I showed you guys my, my new car. So I have a 2015 Corolla. Um, if you guys know the story behind my 98 Toyota Camry, it was a car that my grandma gave to me and it was my favorite car of all time. I loved that car. It had such sentimental value to me. And I was on a, a road trip to visit my friend in Utah and the car broke down on me in the middle of the desert. The transmission went out. I had it towed to a Toyota dealership where they wanted me to spend $5,300 to fix it. It had such sentimental value. I was going to have it fixed. However, um, they would not, which is so stupid. They would not accept credit cards or checks. Um, it had to be like a money order, like one of those things. So I needed the four days to transfer my money anyway. But the problem wasn't the money. The problem was I was on vacation from work. I had one week off of vacation and they said it would be three to five weeks to fix my car. So um, even if I did get it fixed and had it parked at my friend Shelly's house, I wouldn't have been able to pick it up for another year because I already used all my vacation time. So I would have had to have like rented or leased a car for a year and lost money on that and all this other stuff. So it would have added up to like eight, nine thousand, ten thousand dollars when so anyway, I bought the cheapest car they had on the lot, which was a Toyota Corolla. I walked out with like for like 13,000 something and I paid it off in six months as fast as I could. And I always lived with that weighing on my heart, <clears throat> weighing on my heart that I couldn't get the Camry back. And I loved that car. And recently um, I've been able to save money and I'm doing pretty well. And I started shopping for a Camry and I found a Camry in the same color year tires, brand new tires, uh, 77,000 miles on the odometer. I opened up the engine. It looks like it's never even been driven. It's perfect. And I could not pass it up because I'm getting a second chance at my car. So it was a $4,000 car. It is a luxury. However, registration and insurance in Arizona is so cheap. And because I was able to put it on a multi vehicle uh, insurance, it actually, <laughs> the insurance difference between what I was paying for only my Corolla and my Camry on top of it is $50 a year. And the registration on the Camry was $107 for five years. So in Arizona, you can do your registration for one, two, three, or five years. And I chose five. So it really only cost me about $5 a month to have that Camry. And it is worth it to me. But I do want to talk. So that's just, that's that. Um, yeah, car insurance is so cheap. And the registration in California Oh my gosh, the registration would have cost me $400 for one year. And then I'd have to go and get it smog checked before I could get that, that insurance. Darn it. There's ice stuck in the straw. Got it. Okay. So with a car, there's a couple things right off the bat that you can do to save money really fast. One is to wash it yourself. So how many of us go to the gas station and it says, would you like a car wash with that? And you're like, yes, I would like a car wash with that. And it gives you the option of 10, 12, 14, $18 dollars. Back in my day, when I was 16, I remember when you could go to a gas station and fill up. And if you filled up, it was free, a free car wash. So yeah, I'll take a free car wash. Well, they're not free anymore. Uh, you have to pay for them. And uh, stop, just stop paying for it. Uh, don't pay for it. Do it at your house. If you live in an apartment, usually apartments over by the front office, like where the manager is, they have a hose because <laughs> they have to they have to water stuff too. So just ask them at the office if it's okay. If you wash your car, it'll take you 15 minutes and you can wash it yourself. And it's pretty easy to do. Um, when it comes to vacuuming, get a shop vac or 
most most regular vacuum cleaners for your house that you use for the floor have an attachment hose that works it works okay in a car and you can also get for like 20 25 bucks you can buy one of those car vacuums where is my car vacuum Oh, anyway, you can buy one of those car vacuums that plugs into the lighter of the car and you can vacuum your own car. They're about 20, 25 bucks. You can get them on Amazon. Um, okay, so here's something strange that I don't understand about Arizona. In California, air is free for your tires. In Arizona, you have to pay like two bucks for it to fill up your air. And nothing works. Like none of the air things that fill up the tires in your air do it properly. So the other day... I was looking at my car. I'm like, my, you know, I just filled up air. My tires look really low. Why? So I went and got one of those little cheap $1.99 uh, tire pressure gauges. And I check it and it shows I have like 16 PSI. And it's supposed to be at like 32. I was like, it seems, what the heck is wrong? So I go and I fill up um, the air again. I go to one of those air machines. I put in my quarters for like two bucks and I, and then I go and I check my tire pressure again, right after, right after while I'm still there filling at the, and it still says 16. I'm like, why does my tire look flat? And why does the PSI say 16? None of these machines work. So I did finally go and spend 19.99 at O'Reilly auto parts. And I got one of those, those ones you plug into your lighter and it fills up your tire. So I did it myself. But there are small things that you should or can buy that'll save you money in the long run. So if I'm spending two bucks every time I'm filling up my air with tires, I might as well spend 20 bucks and I'll do it myself the next. And after I, I would have done it 10 times, which I check my tire pressure every month. After 10 months, I made my money back. To me, that's a good investment. <clears throat> and if you can... Learn how to do an oil change. Um, I used to work in an oil change center and I have all the equipment still that I used for my cam, my original Camry. So I can do my own oil changes on my Camry. So oil changes and tire pressure. If you don't have enough money um, for a new air filter, then vacuum the one that you have. Just give it a really, first of all, shake it out, hit it, hit it against a rock and to get out all that dust and then give it a quick vacuum. It'll do the job. It's not pretty, but it'll do the job. What was that? What else was there? So there's the that. That's just simple, basic stuff. You know, find the cheapest gas prices. Uh, keep your tire. And I don't understand the air thing. So when your tire pressure is low, it reduces your gas mileage. Reducing your gas mileage uh, increases your CO2, um, and it just pollutes the air. So they should offer uh, air for free because it helps the environment. That's just weird. Okay. <clears throat> and also when it comes to insurance, so car insurance. So here, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just telling you my personal beliefs is that. Yeah, that's just weird. Uh, I buy liability insurance only. Now, people may disagree with that. Here's my idea on it. <clears throat> First of all, I'm a safe driver. I'm a good driver. I'm a defensive driver. Second of all, I've never been in an accident in my life. Um, third thing is, why would I spend? Why would I spend the most amount on full insurance coverage on a depreciating asset? To me, that makes no sense. Now, I've had a lot of friends who have been in car accidents where they were not at fault, but the other driver sped away or whatever happened. And the insurance company, even though they had full insurance, did not, they did not give them the money. They didn't give them the money or the blue book value or anything like that. Or they had, one of my friends had like a really souped up truck, like super, it was like a lifted and it had all these gadgets and gizmos that most trucks don't have. And when their truck was in an accident, um, the insurance company didn't take into account all of those improvements. So they spent $10,000, $12,000 on improvement. And when the time come to get, get their money, they didn't even get the full Kelly Blue Book value of the car. So to me, that
Okay, so you guys heard that. Um, so they didn't even get the full Kelly Blue Book of the car. So um, I won't pay for full coverage. I will pay for liability only, period. And that saves quite a bit of money. I think my insurance is $400 a year for both cars. That's it, That includes both cars. Um, so that is cars. So then we move on to entertainment. Now... <clears throat> Entertainment, I'm easily entertained, <laughs> but I like to read and books are free at the library. I like to watch TV. Uh, TV is free uh, with my Roku box. Um, I do have to pay internet, which whatever, there's nothing I can do about that. But people who are still on cable, I am telling you, I used to work for Comcast, which is Xfinity. I used to work there. Everything that is available on Comcast is available somewhere on my Roku box. And I am finding new things every day. So I found the NBC app and I was, uh, and, I, and I found Quantum Leap, my favorite show, which is the reason I was keeping my Sling TV. And I love Sling TV. If you are weaning yourself off of cable, go with Sling TV first and then go to the Roku box, whatever. Um, but Sling TV is amazing if you're trying to go from like a $150 bill and then you go down to a $30 Sling TV bill. I love Sling TV. But I couldn't justify having it if I was able to find everything that I was watching on my Roku box. So I found the NBC channel just recently and it has my Quantum Leap. AMC TV has my Walking Dead. Um, or I can even look it up on YouTube like, YouTube has like not so not so legal things. The Road is currently on YouTube. The whole movie, The Road. If you're a prepper, you've seen it. And actually Quantum Leap is on right now. So Quantum Leap is awesome. Dr. Sam Beckett leaping from life to life, striving to put right what once went wrong and hoping that each leap will be the leap home. So yeah, it's a great show. Um, and you can get, you can find, oh, and my neighbor across the street, I I've been helping her. She's disabled and I'm helping her with, I'm giving her food and doing her laundry. But I was over there the other day and she showed me her Roku box and she has USA. I can't find USA on my Roku box, but we have the same box. So I have to keep looking, but I'm going to find it. I'm going to find it. You and your $10 a month. Well, good for you. Mine's 74 a month, and it's the cheapest one. Yes, I am a 90s girl. Very 90s. Go uh, Xena, Hercules, and Quantum Leap, and uh, Star Trek, all that good stuff. So Roku box for TV. Boom. Uh, internet. And then when it comes to entertainment, I, I'm, I'm strange. I love walking. I love going down to the river and I found I'm so excited while I was walking somebody the other day, last night, night before, I found that at the river they have bocce courts and horseshoes, like the horseshoe game, horseshoe toss. So I need to go get some horseshoes and, and a bocce set, but I wouldn't have anyone to play with, but it would be fun. Uh, okay. What's the other one? Beanbag toss. I have a beanbag toss game. So whenever my friends come over um, or a friend comes over, it's always one at a time. We play beanbag toss in the backyard and that lasts us for like hours. It's almost like free bowling. Um, uh, what is it? Hacky sack is fun to do at the beach. We have a, we have the, I'm at the river. There's beaches. So bring your hacky sack beach fun. I have a metal detector, which I have not found anything with. I find a lot of bottle caps, but it's fun to try. Fishing. Uh, I like fishing and I get my bait from my rotisserie chickens that, or not even rotisserie chickens, they're just chickens that I get reduced price. And then I keep the innards and I use them as bait. And the river just stocked trout three days ago. So I am going fishing day after tomorrow. Uh, and, you know, I mean, what else is there really? You know, you can go hiking. I have a backpack that is a cooler. It's a cooler backpack, so I can pack my lunch. I can pack ice water or ice or whatever I want, and I can go hiking all day long, anytime, 
all the time and it's free as long as you don't have to pay for parking or pay pay to get into the parks it's free i mean everything i like doing doesn't cost any money i don't like going to the movies really because i why why pay 15 dollars to go to a movie when i can get popcorn here for like a nickel you know you get the i have a popcorn maker and you just put it in the popcorn maker you make a big old barrel, like it doesn't even have to be a bucket. It's like a barrel of popcorn for a nickel. And, you know, you can go to a red box if you have to for a dollar, but it's, it's free. So I don't understand paying for stuff. And then you can garden. I love gardening. So gardening is all you pay for is seeds and dirt. So, and it gives you something in return. It's like a profitable hobby, right? Profit. Well, you don't really make money, but you know what I mean. You get something in return. You get food. So entertainment should not cost anything. And if you are thinking of doing something that does cost money, then stop yourself. Think about it and think, how can I do this or something very similar to it for free? How can I do it for free? Okay. Yeah. Frisbee. Yeah. You can get a Frisbee at a dollar store. Um, and there's like those. There's like this freebie frisbee game um, where they have these things that you throw them into a chainy thing. And I don't know how to play that and I don't get it, but that's a big thing here. It was kind of big back in Livermore too, in California. Yeah, Michael, I have neighbors. Um, my neighbor across the street, I just told you I do her laundry. She's disabled. I do her laundry and I bring her food and my, Oh, here's a cute little story. My neighbor, John, I brought him some dinner the other day and uh, he says, what do you, we have a strange uh, relationship. We yell at each other and that's how we communicate. Um, I was yelling at him that I couldn't get through his fence. I was like, John, I can't get through your damn fence. Come open your fence. And he's like, what are you yelling at me for? I'm like, I'm like, I can't get through your gate well, uh, why can't you get through my gate? What's wrong with your brain? And I said, it's not my brain. I'm not eight feet tall. And so he finally lets me in the gate and I give him dinner, uh, rotisserie chicken and some French bread and uh, pasta. And he invites me to dinner at the casinos because he loves to gamble. He's the one who used to own this house. And he always tells me that he's gambling away my house, gambling away the money that I gave him for the house. And, uh, he, he takes me out to a prime rib dinner because he's got these coupons for free prime rib dinner. And he takes me out. We had a prime rib dinner. It was delicious. It was amazing. And um, a subscriber of mine sent me money to put in a slot machine. And I told him, I said, you sent, and he said, if you win, I get half. And I said, okay, but you mm. gave it to the wrong person because I always win right away and I quit. And it's always a small amount or whatever. So I put 20 bucks in the machine and I accidentally put my elbow on the thing while I was trying to figure out how to use this machine. Cause I'm not a gambler. And I, I, I accidentally pushed the thing and nothing happened. And I was like, Oh, okay. So that's how you do it. So I, I hit the button on purpose. I won $60 and 50 cents and I quit and I offered him his half. Do I ever miss the atmosphere or social aspect of going to cinemas? I think half the fun is being is, is the change in scenery from being at home. You know, I really don't. Um, unfortunately, when like whenever I go to the movie theater, it's a bunch of teeny boppers. And it seems like a bunch of like teenagers where the guys are trying to look really cool and the girls are being extremely loud and prissy in order to get attention from the boys. So that's all I notice when I go to the movies these days. Little teenagers who you know, are being obnoxious, trying to get attention because they want to be, um, you know, pretty to the other sex and the guys want to be like tough and cool to the other sex. So, um, no, I don't really like the atmosphere in the movie theaters. <clears throat> All right. So entertainment is free folks. It's yeah. Those darn kids, those kids just get on my nerves. Um, all right, so we went over cars, entertainment, food. So I do want to talk about like soap, toothpaste. Uh, it, I'm sorry if you're a male, but like feminine hygiene, laundry, soap, stuff like that. Um, all right, so when it comes to feminine hygiene, I, I have, I mean, I have a bunch of disposable ones. 
yeah, Livermore bocce ball. They have them at the Wente Vineyards too to make it super uh, cool. But um, reusable cloth menstrual pads that you just wash in the washing machine. Um, you buy one set. And the great thing about it, and I'm sorry if I'm giving too much information here, but um, before I started using the cloth ones, and again, I have a whole stockpile of disposable ones, the normal kind. Um, so I would get my period and it would last a full seven days. But once I switched over to the uh, cloth ones, the reusable ones that are organic, organic cotton, um, my period went from seven days to like three or four. So I don't know what, I don't know why, but it makes it shorter, which is great. Um, and yeah, some people use menstrual cups. I've never tried. Um, I'm a little intimidated by it, but again, I was intimidated by my bidet before I got one. So I might, I might try, try that eventually. We don't have drive-ins here, but I would love to try that. Um, when it comes to soap, so Usually what people in toothpaste too. So I want to try toothpaste. So when you, when people go and buy toothpaste, I have a toothpaste thing. Like I like to change the flavor all the time. So I always have four or five toothpaste at the same time. And in the morning, like, okay, so you've got cinnamon, winter fresh spearmint, and then you've got like the crest 3d white with uh, the little crystal things. I don't know how to explain it, but um, I always get mine for a dollar or less. I will not pay more than a dollar. And typically they're 87 cents. So I've got close up cinnamon, fresh, fresh burst cinnamon, 87 cents. It's always at the bottom shelf at Walmart, very bottom shelf. So I've got the close up that was 87 cents. And then I've got the aim, which is the white one that has like uh, baking soda in it. Aim 87 cents. And then I've got an aqua fresh, which is like the, the green one. Um, anyway, that one was like 97 cents. And then I've got a last one that was a Crest 3D. And I got, luckily, I love that one. But I got that one when it was on uh, clearance at, I believe it was Walmart. And then the mouthwash that I get, I always get the Equate brand. And um, I have two, so I have two containers of mouthwash. And I'll, this one will be empty. And I'll go and buy a new one and I'll pour half so that they're equal, right? So I've got two equal ones. And then I'll fill up the rest with water so it's half and half. Or I will fill it up with uh, hydrogen peroxide. So I'm paying $2 for mouthwash. And then I water it down halfway, which means I just paid a dollar for mouthwash. I gave myself a 50% discount. So that's what I do. If you are in really dire straits, 87 cents for AIM or Pepsodent or whatever, bottom shelf, um, one at the dollar store, you, I think it's one or it can be two or three ivory soap. It works great as a, obviously a soap, but leg shaver. Um, what do you call that? Shaving cream. It works really well for shaving cream. So it get, leaves your skin really soft. And if you're in really bad place, I mean, there's a lot of different options. So VO5, at the dollar store offers a three in one shampoo, conditioner and body wash. That's all you need. Uh, $1 and you can water it down. So make it two for a dollar. You know, you just gave yourself a 50% discount on a $1 item that has three things, shampoo, conditioner and body wash. So for a dollar, you're done. That's all you need. Okay. Um, I do want to talk about like people's obsessions with bathing and showering. So people take like sometimes two baths a day, sometimes more depending on the weather, but it's actually not good for you, uh, for your skin to, and the oils in the natural oils in your body to take a shower every day. My thing I do, I shouldn't, I know I should not take a shower every day, but I do. Um, but I would like to try and do it once every couple days, once every three days, which is what is supposed to be happening. Um, Dr. Bronner's is expensive. All right. Yeah, milk, shampoo, mouthwash, um, cleaning, like Dawn dish liquid, laundry detergent, if it's the liquid kind. So everybody needs to wash their hands during Corona, not a full shower. You don't need to be disinfective and antibacterial every two seconds, but it's bad for your skin. It's also bad to wash your hair every day. Um, some people have really 
strange hair. Like if you don't wash it every day, it's going to turn into a giant fro or something. Or some people are like, no, my hair's so disgusting. I'm just going to look like an oily train wreck if I don't wash every day. Well, that's up to you, but you're wasting money and you're not allowing your body to quote unquote heal itself from the previous uh, time that you wash it down with a million different chemicals. So that's another thing about chemicals is that people talk about, oh, there's so many chemicals and everything. Look, if you just stopped using shampoo, conditioner, and soap, you would alleviate, alleviate three or 400 chemicals from your body per day. And people act like they do require shampoo, conditioner, and body wash or whatever. So in order to get clean, and that's not the truth, there is something called the no poo method. You can look it up on YouTube. It's people who don't use uh, products on their hair. They use water. Um, some people will use baking soda or apple cider or vinegar in order to do something. I don't know. But usually after a month, you're going to have you're going to have horrible hair, which is your, oh, thank you, Holly. What's DG? What is that light on the left, your right? That? So it's a lamp. <clears throat> All right. So yeah, baking soda and vinegar. Um, so if you want to get rid of chemicals in your life, you can take baths and showers, uh, using just exfoliating gloves. Um, and that will, and I've done that before. It gets rid of all the dead skin cells. And then people talk about like deodorant, like they make, it's so weird that these, I think that it originally stems from the corporations making you think that if you don't use shampoo, conditioner, soap, deodorant, makeup, uh, all this other stuff that you're a disgusting person somehow. And that's not the case. Um, some people have to, some people have to um, use these types of things because whatever reason, but um, as long as you wash yourself like with deodorant, not with deodorant, as long as you wash your, your underarms every day, you're not required to use deodorant. It's not absolutely required. Uh, same thing, you know, as long as you rinse yourself with water, you're not, you're usually not going to stink unless you have really bad body odor or perspiration issues. So if you're in really, really dire straits, I do, I do not recommend giving up uh, toothpaste. Um, personally, I'm a little bit OCD about my teeth. Um, I antiperspirant de deodorant. It's not really required. You don't need it in order to be a clean person as long as you shower um, and use. You can use exfoliating gloves. Um, no, I have not always been using live chat yes uh, no aluminum see there's another person no aluminum in deodorant so use deodorant without aluminum there is another thing is that you're saying use use deodorant without aluminum but what about those other 500 chemicals that are in the deodorant that you're using just because it has aluminum doesn't or does not have aluminum doesn't mean that there's another three to 500 other chemicals that are in the deodorant so just don't use it if you're anti-chemical uh, you got to stop using soap, shampoo, body wash, body wash, makeup, deodorant. Um, you you can't you can't just say I don't want aluminum in my deodorant and not worry about the other three to five hundred uh, chemicals that are in deodorant. Um, yeah, so that's uh, that's just whatever. Yeah, sweat doesn't stink until it comes in contact with bacteria. Again, that's something where as long as you, yeah, essential oil. So some people will use baking soda as deodorant and some will. So I just want you guys to retrain your brain if you, and use everything you have before you buy more. So You guys are being ridiculous. You can rub a car air freshener under your arms. Scott Croft, um, if you make more stupid comments, we're gonna we're gonna kick you out. Um, so look, you can use Dove soap. It's one of the most expensive soaps that's out there, but as long as you have money to do so, I have no problem with that. But if you're out of money and you're out of options, don't go and use your credit card. Use just use your exfoliating gloves or a washcloth, you know. A washcloth is an exfoliator if you use it correctly. Um, so don't buy the deodorant, the makeup, the hair products, the shampoo, conditioner, body wash, uh, makeup, uh, hairspray, hair gel. Just brush your hair, brush your teeth, 
wash your body with water if you have to. Um, all right. So another thing about food is that a lot of people don't take into the consideration the, oh, thank you, Holly. Um, don't take into consideration glowing blue light opposite of the lamp. I'm not sure what you mean. This is a, a hydroponic system that's growing vegetables. It's just at a weird angle. So it looks kind of strange. This is just a lamp. So hydroponics lamp. Um, okay. So their drinks, people don't realize how many calories and how many dollars they're wasting on their drinks. So that means no beer, no soda, no Gatorade, um, no, no country time lemonade. If you switch to just water, um, it's going to make a huge dent in your budget. Pepsi, uh, Coke, soda, a and W root beer, whatever it is. A lot of people waste money on that stuff and you don't have to. It's a, it's a waste of money. Um, I don't think I've drank a soda since I've had fast food, which has been over a year. Again, I should be making a video like my first fast food in a year. And I don't even know if I can drink the soda. Um, Cause even when I did try drinking soda, I could only drink like a third of one before I couldn't take it anymore. The carbonation would fill my stomach. Um, it would make me burp and um, it just, I could feel the sugar on my teeth, rotting my teeth right away. <clears throat> CC, why would you ask me if I go to the doctor? Um, thank you to multiplex. I appreciate it. Yeah, tea is a tea and coffee are, are super cheap, especially um people I don't drink tea. I'm a I'm a, you guys know I'm a coffee freak. I'm a coffee fanatic. I'm drinking my homemade frappuccino right now. But tea is super cheap and sun tea, I understand is delicious. So, um yeah, if you get your if you give yourself a headache when you don't drink diet coke, that means that uh you're addicted. And, and that's, I'm not making fun of you at all. Um, I'm not saying, I'm not, I'm not trying to make light of it. Um, companies put chemicals into their products to make people addicted. Um, oh, thank you, Countdown to Life. I appreciate that. That's a pretty uh, sizable donation. So thank you so much. Yeah, black coffee. Um, I don't, I don't, I'm not big on black coffee, but I do have, I take cream and sugar with mine. Um, but it's, it's absolutely, I, I, it's so good. I'm yeah. And then when I have extra fruit, um, I'll put it in my Jacqueline juicer and I'll make popsicles out of them. And if I'm, that's a, they're especially good. So in the summer, I've never dealt with 135 degree heat before. And I was finding during the summer, I was getting a lot of headaches and somebody said I needed to drink sugar. I don't know if, it, I don't remember if it was one of my neighbors or something. So that's how I got on the popsicle fruit thing. Um, yeah, so I do, I do drink sugar, sugar with my coffee, but for some reason it wasn't enough. Yeah, um, diet soda is, any, any kind of soda is bad for you. In fact, if you read the research on it, um, you'll find that the only reason you don't throw up is because of the absorbic acid that they put in soda. Otherwise you would throw up from the over consumption of sugar immediately hitting you. It's pretty much poison. Yeah. Tea is very good for you. It's natural. Anything that's natural, coffee is natural. Tea is natural. Um, they grow. So anything you can grow and you can drink, it's going to be good for you. Yeah. Jacqueline's kind of awesome. Uh, he was like, I think he's gone now, but he's like a hundred when he died. Next time, check my thyroid at the doctor. Uh, why would I do that? What What's wrong with the lighting? Do I look ugly? Is there something wrong with me? I mean, I don't think that it's appropriate to tell people uh, there's something wrong with the lighting. Like there's something wrong with your face. You need to go and get it checked. Like that's not appropriate. That's not cool. Um, and I get that quite a bit. A lot of people um, say that there's something wrong with my neck or they think that I'm a transgender person because they assume I have. This is my neck. This is my mother had the same neck. Hold on.
This is a picture of my mom. Okay. Look at her neck. See her neck? That's just what I look like. See her neck? That's that's just what our necks look like. That's If you think there's something wrong with my neck, there's not. That's just what it looks like. I take after my mother. Okay? We have weird necks. My grandma has a weird neck, too. But it's not appropriate for you to tell someone that they need to get something checked because you think there's something wrong with them. That's not okay. <laughs> yeah, team weird neck. I don't know what it is. I am always getting... Like uh, people telling me that your neck, you look, your neck looks weird or there's something wrong with your neck or you need to check your thyroid. I think something's wrong. And it's like, there's nothing wrong. Okay. So does anyone have any questions before I start just going off on the list here of your chats? Does anyone have any questions about anything specific when it comes to saving money? A cheap meal idea. Well, I've got. Ah, well, I've got a whole bunch of meals on there that are cheap meal ideas. Um, and I actually, I did make a video, but <laughs> right now I've I had like a creativity boom in the last couple of weeks. I have made videos all the way through January. So as you know, I keep my videos spaced five days apart. I've already made all my videos all the way through January, and I'm still making them every day. Like I'm going to pretty soon, I'm going to be like a year in advance. Um, apps for saving money. I'm not, and I'm not a tech person. So I'm not the person to uh, ask. My mom was not a native American. She actually uh, was mostly like me, German and Spanish, but, uh, or German, I should say she was mostly German, but she had such I have a theory on that. She had such an appreciation for Native Americans and she was a huge horseback rider and she did barrel racing uh, and she was all about Native American stuff. And I think that one of her past lives was starting to come in because but that picture was taken only two weeks before she passed away um, or a couple. Oh, I'm sorry. That was a couple weeks before she started her chemo. Um, but she looked Native American and I think that she was maybe Native American in several of her past lives. So it was just coming on through. Yeah, I'm not going to post more frequently. Um, YouTube is, yeah, my mom passed away about 10 years ago. YouTube is very strange. Um, YouTube is very strange. So if I, if I post a video once every three days, my money goes down. If I post something every seven days, my money goes down. But if I post every five days, it seems to stay pretty stable. So it's some weird thing about the algorithms. Um, I don't know what it is. Yeah, I do shop at thrift stores on occasion. I just did a little bit of Christmas shopping. And I actually got myself a random couple of things. So see that book on the end right there? That is one year after. So I read the book one second after, but I didn't get one year after. And that was only like 25 cents. The book is tore up, but it was only 25 cents. So see how messed up the book is? So once I finish with it, it's probably going to be put in the fireplace. Not, not that I like burning books, but it's just, it's can't really, I don't think I'm actually surprised. Oh, thank you, Peggy. I'm actually surprised that it made it to the thrift store in such poor condition, but um, it's got one. Oh, it's got one read left in it and I'm going to read it and then I'll probably use it in the fire. And I, you know, I'm not saying burn books or a crazy thing, but like it's, it's in really bad shape. It's like falling apart. And then I got myself a replacement calculator because my old calculator's battery died and the battery was like, Four fifty or five bucks, but this was only fifty cents, so it was cheaper for me to get a new calculator than it was to fix the old one. I also got for my Camry 
a windshield windshield thingy for two bucks. Um, and um, I got coffee with Kate. I got her kids. Oh, nope, they don't really watch my channel. Um, I got her some her kids some dinosaurs and nature books on like uh like different stuff. Like it, it's it's a life book, like life series books, and it's like um primates, reptiles, volcanoes, solar systems, stuff like that. Which states are the friendliest for retirees on a budget? Um, Arizona. I'm I'm not joking. Um, Arizona and Nevada. So Nevada is um, a little bit more expensive than Arizona, but there's no income tax, state income tax in Nevada. But Arizona has um, lower prices, and um, but Nevada and Arizona are the places to go to retire. I'm telling you, uh, that's where to go. Um, I feed Rocky right now. He's got Rachel Ray. Um, turkey, brown rice, and venison. So no, he doesn't get the cheap stuff. Yeah, I'm sorry you don't like my hair dye, Linda. That sucks for you. I'm actually trying to grow it out. Um, it went, I went too light, or went too light on it. So I'm trying to grow out my dark hair. Good, Dawn. Yeah, don't waste water. Water is a precious commodity. Does Arizona have tiny home communities? Not that I know of, but they're pretty lenient on if you have your own land and you're rural, you can do pretty much whatever you want. Um, I don't even think that they require permits. You might, you would have to look into it depending on where you live, but they're pretty lenient here. Yeah, Texas has no income tax, but they also have extremely high property taxes. So I wouldn't I wouldn't do that. And yes, you can cut up clothes to make rags. I've actually I have that. So as you know, oh thank you, Mary Beth. So as you know, um, yeah, I have health insurance. I I have a bidet, so I use very little toilet paper, if any, because a bidet takes place of toilet paper and I have toilet paper there for guests if they need it and plus I have like probably 20 rolls of toilet paper in the cabinet so I'm that'll probably last me the rest of my life but um so blowing my nose in the morning um instead of using toilet paper I had a pair of pajama pants and the elastic string got so st like stretched out or it broke or snapped or whatever so I cut it up and it's made out of flannel so I have flannel hankies in my room and there's like 20 of them. My health insurance is 217 a month and I have it through Colonial Health. Um, I found them. I did a web search for cheap health insurance in Arizona and it had a list of like I think three or four different health insurance companies and I called each one and got quotes from each one and Colonial Health was the cheapest for what I wanted. <clears throat> yeah, some people blow their nose in the sink and wash it. I've I've done that before. Oh, Todd, that wasn't really that bad. <laughs> Todd got rid of it. Um, I have a video on making dog food. It's it's in there. Type in Prepper Princess dog food. It'll come up. I used to make uh Rocky Rocky's dog food when I first got him. He has where did he go? He has some sort of digestion issue and I've taken him to three different vets on four different occasions because he has a lot of blood in his stool. And I've taken him to three vets, four different occasions. The only thing that they would do is prescribe pro some special enzyme dog food. And I had him on the enzyme dog food, which is $120 a bag, which lasts which lasts a month and I had him on that, but there was no significant change whatsoever in his pooping. Um, so the best thing I can do with, with the advice of another friend is I took him off chicken, like anything that has chicken in them in it, I won't buy him. And I, so I have him on a no chicken, no wheat, like no added, added wheat, like stuff like no, no added wheat. You know what I mean? 
and um, it's improved. His his something's wrong with his digestion. It's never going to be a hundred percent, but it's less bad when um, probiotic enzyme. That was it. No, pro, no, that's not right. But anyway, that food didn't do any good. So I've been, ex I just experiment with food and it seems to help when he's not on chicken or wheat, but it, it'll never be all the way better. His, his stools are always, uh, he has never, I've only seen him have one solid poop in the two years that I've had him. It's always runny and bloody. And if he poops while we're on a walk, I can't, there's nothing for me to pick up. It's watery and runny. So there's, that's what I got. Your feline overlords. Can you, if Rocky can use Dr. Christopher's liver gallbladder pills, can you check? I wouldn't know how to check that. Okay, so, um, yeah, if you guys have any questions, you'll have to put it in caps lock. Do I have a favorite survival prepper book? Nope. And, you know, I was, I do have a favorite movie and Angry Prepper asked me this question and I gave him the wrong answer. Answer. I was talking about like the book of Eli and the road. It's actually one that I like even better. It's in Spanish and it's got subtitles, but it's called Los Ultimos Dias. Um, but it's got, it's got uh, subtitles. So it's a good movie. It's about um, people who get like extreme agoraphobia. And as soon as they walk outside, they die everybody has to like dig tunnels and he's trying to get to his girlfriend and it's actually a really good movie um you can set your water heater if there is an i've never seen a water heater that has actual numbers on it but 120 is fine use canned pumpkin he I, I guess i could try i have some canned pumpkin like like pumpkin pie stuff um, they gave him a fecal test. They couldn't find anything wrong. So they just said that um, he had digestion issues, but the fecal thing, they couldn't find anything. Wait, go back up. Yeah, Rocky gets raw meat. Whenever I'm making something, he gets raw meat. He, he's one of the only two dogs I've had that likes it. Oh, just 100% pumpkin? Okay. Got it. Pureed, not pie filling. Got it. I will get some pumpkin. Percolator versus drip machine. Do you mean on coffee? I, I've never had a percolator. I've only had the drip type. Yeah, I got it. Plain pumpkin, not pie filling. Got it, got it, got it. My live chats, I'm going to try and do them once a month. Um, it depends. Uh, the The problem is I'm sure that Todd, Todd, who is the master moderator, has like six, he's got like a, he's like, he's like the FBI. Like he's got six different computer screens and he's got like eight different mouses and he's like a magician with his moderating. And what you guys are seeing in the comment section, I'm sure is like, he's just like delete, 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 delete. The trolls on YouTube have gotten out of hand. Um, so going on here is like, there's no way I could moderate it myself. It would just be all trolls and I wouldn't even be able to see your guys's comments, but, tr but Todd really is like the master moderator and he's probably back there sweating, you know, trying to get, um, trying to get rid of them all. And I don't want to put him out because he's doing it for free because he's awesome, but I don't want to like do it super often because it's like really, it's hard for him. Yeah. Everybody, everybody clap for Todd, Mr. Todd, the master moderator. Um, yeah, I do use a Berkey. Um, so here's the funny thing about my Berkey. All right, so here we have extremely hard water in Arizona, right? Really hard water. So here's the thing about my Berkey. I've, it, the water tastes a lot better coming from the Berkey, but I don't know if I can show you this. All right, now, 
I can't, I can't show you, but from the spigot, so we have hard water, meaning there's calcium and everything. That's why if you ever see the inside of my toilet, it's got that ring around it. And the water here is just like super hard. So there's a spigot on the Berkey. So, and I, I fill up the Berkey every day and I fill up my water bottles. So on the spigot on the bottom where the water comes out, there's buildup, right? Now, if the Berkey is really doing what it says that it's supposed to be doing, wouldn't it have filtered out all that buildup before it hit the spigot? Meaning there shouldn't be that white ring of crust around the spigot like there is. So I'm wondering if it really does what it says that it does. Um, hard water, uh, it makes, well, I found ways around it. It doesn't do anything to my hair, but it makes your skin really dry. And that's another thing about uh, lotion that people don't usually know. When you put on lotion, yeah, no, you can dip the spigot in vinegar to clean it, but it, but the fact of the matter is, is that it, sh the water should have already been filtered, and there should, it shouldn't be hard water down at the spigot anymore on the Berkey because it supposedly filters out everything. And if it did, there wouldn't be buildup. Anyway, the hard water. Uh, lotion. So when people use lotion, they just rub it on their skin. That's not what, how you're supposed to do it. To use lotion, you're supposed to put it on your skin right when you get out of the shower and you're still dripping wet. That's when you put lotion on. And I can guarantee you, if you start doing that, you'll use less lotion. You won't need to reapply and it'll keep your skin um, not dry like all day. So if you guys have like, you use a lot of lotion, do that while your body is still wet, still dripping out of the shower, then put your lotion on, then dry off with your towel. Okay. So there you go. Yeah. Um, Mario, uh, put on the lotion right when you get out of the shower and your, your face is still wet. Yes. You have reduced your utility bill in half. Awesome. Yeah, see, just a phase. I don't know if the Berkey does what it says. I would like to get some sort of water testing strip. And the thing is, is that I'm affiliated with Berkeley, Berkey, but they, as a company, they make it so difficult to just get a link that I don't even, I don't even advertise it on my channel because they, they, and then I've got the hard water thing. Like it's supposed to be so awesome. Yeah, it takes out the bad things. So it makes it, it does taste good. I mean, I'm not going to lie. The water tastes good. Um, yeah, that buildup isn't, I have a fluoride filter. It's not, it's not fluoride. Yeah. Water softener. Nah. Hot place. Oh, thank you, Mickey. You've been watching for years and wanted to say how much I appreciate you from the standpoint of prepping and taking care of oneself as a single female. I find myself saying if she can do it, then so can I. Thank you so much. You know, it's funny. If you guys ever watch Living on a Dime to Grow Rich, funny thing about her channel is she gets all these people on there who say things like, uh, you don't know. So she has a family and they say to her, you don't know what it's like. Um, you don't understand. I'm single. And then over here, I'm single. And then I get the people who say, you don't understand what it's like. I have a family. <laughs> it's like, you can't win either way, me or Tara. So she gets the singles saying, you don't understand. And I get the people with families who are like, you don't understand. So there are people from every single walk of life who have uh, done it. Um, yes, yeah, she might be a millionaire. And I am on my way to becoming a millionaire. That's my goal. How do I donate? Are you talking to me? So um, I have $150 automatically deducted from my credit card, which I pay off biweekly. So $150 a month comes out of that. Um, if I have good months on YouTube or whatever, I always take 10% of whatever I earn. And then I will go and buy cat food and dog food. And I give it to a specific organization here that gives that dog food and cat food to people on low incomes who can't afford dog or cat food and don't want to give up their pets. Uh, I also have been for the last week or two, um, I've been donating to donating to the food bank in Laughlin and I'm thinking of volunteering there as well. 
I also have a disabled neighbor across the street who I do her laundry every week and I bring her food and occasionally she'll ask me to do an errand for her, which she asked me to go and pick up one of her Walmart thingies, like where you, they go and put it in your trunk or something. So I have to go do that tomorrow between 3 p.m. and 4 p.m. And I've never done that before. So um, that's how I donate. <clears throat> um, people who don't want to give up their pets, but can't take care of them, adult card takeaway. You could say the same thing for children. So how would you like it if uh, you had children and then you hit hard times and you couldn't afford them? And then somebody just came and took them away and said, well, you don't get to be a parent anymore. Even though you love your children, you can't afford them. That's not cool. Um, I don't know if she was buying a million dollar house. I know that her, she, she, I mean, think about this. If you are in poverty and you're doing really poorly, you want it to be temporary. There are people who perpetually live in poverty who do it generationally. Their parents teach them to be on welfare and their parents teach them how to um, live off the dole or live off of the government. But there are those people who are in poverty who don't want to stay there. And if Tara can do it, I mean, Tara, I mean, look at her. She's, she's completely disabled. She can't work. She started out making $300 a month in disability. You know, I'm sure she was getting help from the church in just to feed herself. And she's too disabled to do anything. But think about this. What an amazing thing that she did. She took her disability and she took her tiny, tiny income and she taught herself how to cook amazing, wonderful meals on an extreme budget, okay? That is an amazing feat in itself, especially when you're disabled. She took it another step further and she showed other people how to do that. She showed other people how to cook cheap, amazing, delicious meals for super, super inexpensive. And she is making a killing off of that. And God bless her. She deserves it. Like if you are someone who's in poverty and you want to get out, she found the way she found a perfect way for her. And I think it's amazing for me personally. I'm moving a bit slower. I'm a slow mover, I guess. Um, but you know, doing YouTube, Patreon working, and I did write a book. I just need to learn how to publish it on Amazon. And I want to start writing books too. Um, I want them to be easy reads, easy, um, short books, uh, but you know, easy to read printable versions that you can just put in and use as a reference. And I would like to, I would love to be able to do what she has done. She's just done it better than me. You know, I gotta be honest. Um, and I'm really, really happy for it. And think about this. If, if you are, here's, here's one way I want to try, want to try and get you guys to, uh, to retrain your brain. If someone is successful at something, no matter what it is, all right, don't automatically assume that they stepped on somebody uh, and, you know, took advantage of other, other people in order to, um, to get where they are. Be happy for them. That is one of the and I mean, truly be happy. Don't be like, well, she only did that because she did this and she didn't really do it herself. And I'm sure, you know, a bunch of people helped her and, you know, don't find ways to find out why they are somehow unworthy of success. Be truly happy for them. And if you yeah, don't forget to, if you guys could um, hit the like button because, or the dislike button, it'll help me get higher on the algorithms on YouTube. And it'll get more people. Of <laughs> um, but be happy for them. Be truly, truly happy for them. And I promise you, if you are happy for them, success will follow you. And that's all I can think of. If, if anyone out there, so I'm not saying this just as a YouTuber, I'm saying this is just like a person, right? If someone is doing better than you, they will never put you down 
for what you're trying to do to improve yourself. Never. They will never make you feel bad or awkward. They will root you on until the very end. The only people that are going to put you down or make fun of you or um, make you feel bad about yourself, the, the only people who are going to do that are people that are doing worse than you. And they want you to do worse and be down at their level. That's, that's all there is to it. I had a wonderful comment on my living below the poverty line video. And it was a guy who's doing better than me. He's like, um, he said something like, uh, you know, listen to Prepper Princess. He said, I'm 50 years old and I was able to retire by doing exactly what she did. And I could not be happier and all this other stuff. So he was, he's doing better than me. And he's telling people to listen to me because I'm doing, I'm on my way to where he is. I haven't reached his level yet, but he's telling people, you know, I am at a higher level, but I'm rooting for her. Do what she says. She's doing it right. So yeah, they're always going to, the good ones, the ones who are doing better than you are going to root you on. The ones who are doing worse than you are going to try and bring you down. Beat the bush. Um, Beat the Bush, I've seen his channel. He lives in Newark, I believe, in California. Yeah, so he didn't live very far from me. Um, he is, I think he's a little bit more minimalist than me. And he lives, he makes his living off of, he makes it off of YouTube and his investment income from his investments. And I would love to get to that level. I mean, I would, I would love to do that. Um, this is a live chat, so I can't talk about boomsticks. You can't talk about them uh, on live chats or have them in the background or anything. And money is not the measure of success, but it sure does help you relax and it gives you more opportunities to make choices. Being on YouTube make me feel jaded. Yes. Yes, it does. Um, you know, there are so many bad, the negative comments versus the positive comments are probably 80% negative, 20% positive. So it really makes you defensive. Like you're very defensive. So if someone's like, um, your hair looks pretty today, you're like, what, what, it, what's wrong with my hair? What was wrong with it in the last video? You know, what, why is it like my hair this time? Did I, what did I do? Or some silly, stupid stuff, but no poo poo talk. I don't know what that means. Your husband and you are going to start prepping with the way the world has in, but it is start. You know, it's funny. I was watching um, some self motivated, some motivational speaker, and they made a good point about this election. They said, when has the gov when have you ever when has the government ever come in and changed your life for the better like it doesn't matter who wins the election nothing's going to change like um it's not going to be coffee and beans and bullets as you know bartering because the whole monetary system is going to collapse it's just it's just crazy um i've kind of i've kind of is it tough job moderating this channel mods Todd, is it tough? Probably. He's probably back there stopping. Oh, thank you, Courtchi. Proud of you too, girl. Or boy, I'm not sure. Boy, girl? Girl, I think. I don't know. How do you slow down the chat? It's going too fast. Uh, financial planner Dave Ramsey... So Dave Ramsey has um, on his page um, a list of financial advisors that you can find in your area. Personally, mine is, hold on, who is mine? Ah, mine is Joseph Laswell, who I found on the Dave Ramsey site. He's a fiduciary in Ripon, California. But you're going to want to get somebody in your area. Okay. Um, all right, guys. So I've been on here for like an hour and a half, I think. Um, so I think I'm going to have to call it a night. Yeah, good. Do Dave Ramsey's baby steps. So that's good. Yeah. Discover your gift and use it. That's what Tara did. And I'm happy for her. No, I'm not going to adopt. 
I have a dog. My retirement goal, I'm not sure of your meaning. Um, I don't think I'll ever fully retire. Retirement is different to people, different people. I don't, I don't really consider myself ever just not doing anything. Like right now, um, I, I do work, but I don't have to. And I could totally live off of my YouTube and Patreon, but that would be retirement, but I'd still be doing YouTube and Patreon. Um, but I don't, I don't think I would ever want to, I mean, it might be cool to quit working like a nine to five job, but I'll never stop doing something. All right. All right, folks. So I'm going to sign off here because I don't, I feel bad for, for Todd doing all this crazy moderating. Um, so I will do another live chat probably in a month or so. And yeah, it's been an hour and a half. So I'll do another live chat in about a month. So I hope that everybody has a great night and do what you can with what you've got. Prepper Princess out.